what is going on guys yes it has been a minute since i've done one of these final work cutoff videos but we're in a new year so we're just all rejuvenated got those creative juices flowing bringing back final order cutoff might be a little bit of platform change to this video i will tell you this week my whole final order cutoff picks are independent comics and small press no big two books i don't have any marvel or any dc so if you're new to this channel I do a lot of comic pop culture related content, so please consider subscribing. Remember, Final Order Cutoff, it is changed. It's not the way it used to be. It used to always be on Monday. Now a different distribution. We got Lunar, we got Penguin House, we got Diamond, FOCs all over. So we're just gonna say this weekend. So that's why I say get your orders in now, get that discount, and let's get into the picks. Starting with Image Comics. If you've been a fan of that Kyle Higgins Radiant Black, this is the book you're going to want to pay attention to. It is super massive and the title sells the book because it is a huge first crossover event for Radiant Black. And we are going to get the debut of Inferno Girl Red as well as the first appearance of Rogue Son. Kyle Higgins, great writer, been loving Radiant Black, loved his take on Power Rangers. He's written Nightwing before, so he's not new to writing great blockbuster comic books. Super massive. There's also cover A, cover B. There's one in 25 variant. There's a one in 50 variant. So if this is something that interests you, get your pre-orders in this weekend. Also, if you don't like any of the regular covers for Super Massive, friends of the channel, sponsored the channel, The 616 Comics, also has their exclusive variant available at the616comics.com. Not only do they have that, but they have a bunch of other Great store exclusives. Another one we're going to talk about on my pick this week. They have an exclusive variant for that as well. Also from Image Comic, we get a new six issue mini series. This is called New Masters. It's from a pair of Nigerian brothers who are creating a dynamic blend of science fiction, drama, and adventure, as well as Afrofuturism. We are talking about West Africa that is ruled under the thumb of alien colonizers, and we get a motley crew of outcasts that find themselves with an ancient artifact that has immense power. Six issue miniseries. I'm looking forward to pick this one up. I love stories like this, so no doubt I'm adding this to my pool list. And it's worth taking that risk because if you order for FOC, like I said, you often get a discount. Next one is from Behemoth Comics. Behemoth Comics has been doing a lot of great stories lately. They've done the MFKZ. They've done You Promised Me Darkness. Plunch a bunch of other great, great indie comic books. Here we're getting the first issue of Heavy Metal Drummer. Really looking forward to this one. It's got four different covers for it. All of them look great. And it takes place in 1986. I'm talking about 80s LA, underground punk, heavy metal, all the great all the great music comes from the 80s. <laughs> well, I'm an 80s guy. I love me some 80s. But either way, under the streets of L.A. in 1986, we get a gruesome interdimensional conflict between order and chaos. Enter Dave, a junkie heavy metal drummer whose life is about to get a whole lot shittier. <laughs> I'm sold. 80s music. Heavy metal, I love all types of music, but yes, I do love 80s rock. And it's from Behemoth, so I know this book is gonna be great. My only problem is, I don't know which cover to get. Have you guys been reading Behemoth comics? If you have, let me know in the comments what's your favorite series. I like the MFKZ. I liked a lot of the covers they've had on there, especially those garbage pail kid homages. Been picking those up. But either way, Behemoth is one of those indie publishers that's definitely on the rise. Next one, we're getting over to AWA Upshot. Another great indie publisher has been put about a lot of great stories. Got a lot of great creative teams between writers and art. So many great series from them as well. But here we are talking about Primos, number one. Here we have two Mayan brothers who constructed a spacecraft and took off traveling to outer space. They end up returning to Earth only to find out their entire civilization has been wiped out. One of the brothers decides to seek revenge using all the technology that they learned on their travel in outer space as a weapon against it. The other brother decides to create a contingency plan and activate the world protectors who are also descendants of their own family, which leaves the fate of the planet lying in the hands of three cousins that are scattered around Central 
in North America. One thing also is they actually have the cover A is also available in the Spanish edition. I think that's really cool. So again, I don't know which cover to pick up, but I might just pick up both of them. Getting over to Mad Cave Studios, we get Speed Republic number one. A lot of first issues on here. And there's a common trend between space and post-apocalyptic. I think that's a big trope or trend within comic books right now. But I don't care as long as the stories are great. This one also takes place in the future apocalyptic Europe. And the entire landscape is ruled pretty much by one autocrat. You got class warfare going on there. You got misery going on. And to distract the public from their poor and empty lives, they offer the chance to compete in a grand race where one winner, one driver wins a life of luxury. But the thing is the kind of hint that it doesn't turn out so good for the people that don't win. So we get a little bit of Cannonball Run, a little bit of Hunger Games, and a lot of Mad Cave Studios. So I'm on board for that. Also from Boom Studios, talk a lot about Boom Studios on this channel. A huge fan of Boom Studios, huge fan of Mad Cave, huge fan of all the publishers I've mentioned here so far. But these two books from Boom Studios don't need to go into a lot of attention about it. We get Berserker number seven hitting Final World Cutoff, that great Keanu Reeves. A lot of people say Keanu Reeves, but don't forget, you got a great, great, great comic writer there as well in Matt Kent. That story has been fantastic. A lot of people up and down on it. Yes, there's a lot of covers, but hey, you got Keanu Reeves behind it. Wouldn't you do the same thing and get that out? Keanu Reeves has been doing the talk nights, the, the late night talk circuit. They've been publishing this. We know it's coming with a live action. There's talk of animation. So all that put to the side, just concentrate on the story. I'm loving this story, picking up number seven. Another one I like that I talk about a lot, Master of Horror himself, Cullen Bunn. Boom Studios, we also get that Basilisk number seven. That's hitting final cutoff, so that's on my pull order as well. This last one I want to talk about is from Dynamite Comics. I don't talk about Dynamite Comics too much. They do have a lot of great covers. They do have a lot of great stories. The only downfall to them is when I say a lot of great covers, I mean a lot of covers. So sometimes that you get almost paralyzed just because they'll have 15 different covers for one book. I know Marvel does that as well, but a lot of times it'll be like three covers, but they have five different versions of it and different incentives. This one's not like this because I just like the cover A for this. And we're talking about that Red Sonja Valent And we're talking about that Red Sonja Valentine special. Love the cover A on this. Love this artwork. I can't say the artist name because I'll absolutely butcher it. Well, I'll try with the prelude that I'll probably butcher it. Sozomica? Sozomica? Either way, gorgeous, gorgeous art. I love the white background on this. It kind of, it gives me a very Adam Hughes vibe to it. And I hate comparing artists to each other because you want the artist's work to stand out on themselves, stand out on its own. But it does have that comparison between Adam Hughes. Love the cover for this. That's the main reason why I have this in here. I'm not even reading Red Sonja right now, which I probably should be because it's it's been great in the past. But the problem is they have a bunch of different Red Sonja books. It's hard to keep up with them. But I'm definitely picking this one up for the cover. In fact, I'll probably pick up multiple copies just because I love the cover that much. There are some other great covers for this one. And like I mentioned earlier in this video, Friends of the Channel, The 616 Comics also has a store exclusive for this one. And it is by the artist Lane. I'm not too, too familiar with that artist, but John at the 616 picks these artists out and for good reason. All of them do fantastic covers. Love the cover on this one. So most likely I will pick up that cover A as well as order me a couple copies from John at the 616comics.com. So those are my picks for FOC this week. I do have one bonus pick talking about Mad Cave Studios earlier. One of my favorite series from all time from Mad Cave Studios is that Knights of the Golden Sun. Absolutely love that story. You can get the volume one trade paperback. It's available right now if you haven't caught up on the floppies. But volume two, that trade paperback for Knights of the Golden Sun hits FOC this week as well. So if you've been following that story and enjoyed it as much as I have, just make sure you guys know you can get that volume two. Pre-order it for FOC. Most likely get a discount. And make sure your store stocks it that way because a lot of, a lot of stores don't carry a lot of indie and small press. They've gotten better at it. Indie Comics... I love the attention that they're getting. More stores are starting to carry it now. And I love seeing that. But if your store doesn't, 
this is a way to catch up on that story through or in the trade paperback or even order the floppies for some of these series. And that's another reason why I wanted to concentrate on indie comics for this video this week. And I have a feeling my final work cutoff going forward will be heavy, heavy on indie and small press. Yes, I think I'll sprinkle some Marvel and DC in there just because some books are too good not to talk about. But there it is, guys. My picks for final work cutoff. Again, if you haven't done so, please consider subscribing. Click that like button for me. This is Brown of Superman's Comics. See you guys in the next video. Everything that we do exclusive, make sure that it's all inclusive. I was taught, make no excuses. As a man, you can't be useless. Man, up cause these people ruthless. Hoes down, these thoughts clueless. Lobster Mac, I'm up at roof, Chris. From my tone, you keep the smoothness. In this world, you get the loot. Then your dreams is gonna be.